Hey, how's it going guys? Uh, before we get started on this video, I want to apologize for the poor video quality. Uh, I was using my uh, Insta360 Ace Pro, which I have here, because I have two of them actually, just so you guys can know I have two. And unfortunately, uh, there was a problem with both of my Insta360s after the firmware update. And uh, the reason why I'm deciding to go ahead and go further with uploading this video, even though it looks over exaggeratedly exposed from its lighting, is because I want Insta360 to see this with the camera and I have an ND8 filter on this part of their Freewell partnership, which is here, which this was $100 or some change like that. And um, I did a factory reset on this and I was able to finally get it back to normal. So I'm hoping that the videos going further uh in the future using this it's going to be much better quality but yeah i wanted to apologize about that also i want you guys to you know see what it was like for me to ride my emotion rs for the first time for an errand and um i hope you guys enjoy the video and again i apologize for the overexposure uh, you're going to see in the footage that if i turn the camera a certain angle it actually has a like normal color and then once i go back straight looking at the uh at the scooter like the scooter looks fine but then everything else like the street in front of me looks over exaggeratedly exposed almost like if i'm riding on top of lights so um with that said again i'm really sorry let's go ahead and get started with this video so you guys can see my experience with the rs and the flat tire issue and i'll talk to you guys at the end of this video for that flat tire problem so with that said let's get going on this video How's it going ladies and gentlemen i am the average guy 1983 in this video we're going to be making a trip over to the east los angeles library from highland park so it's supposed to be an 8.4 mile trip uh to get there and 8.4 miles to get back so like 17 miles but let's see how this scooter does on the road and we're going to be keeping it on speed 2 which goes up to 40 miles an hour so let me go ahead and close everything up here and we're ready to go Alrighty, so uh, we have 100% battery life. The tire pressure set at 50 PSI. And now, and we're going to see just how well it does here. Uh, we're apparently not supposed to make a left turn, but I'm going to make a left turn anyways. Because that's the direction I'm going in. A nice feature I like about this RS when you press down on the brake is that as soon as you push on the brakes, it disables the motor. And that prevents you from uh, accidentally accelerating the scooter and causing some problems for yourself or injury. And I gotta give in motion props on that. Um, for safety gear, I am wearing knee guards, elbow guards, these gloves that you see on, and my full face helmet. And I have a Motoloop backpack with the Insta360 Ace Pro connected to the back. And in the front, I have an Insta360 Ace Pro with the ND8 filter on. So I'm going to try to remain quiet for the moment of this uh, trip because I really got to focus on the road here. This is the first time I take the RS out like this.
I do have to fix my mirror though. I think my son might have accidentally nicked it. So far we went up a slight incline and I had zero issues man uh, climbing that without a problem that's amazing and for my weight for those of you who are wondering I was able to go back down to 287 I haven't been able to do much of my exercises because of my leg issues so I'm hoping I don't have any issues with it and I am doing physical therapy for my right leg. Yeah I'm gonna definitely need to adjust my mirrors a bit on the higher side because I have to look down at them and at an angle but thankfully I have my uh, Wolfbox G930 mirror dash cam which uh, works just the same as an overall rear eyes and I can see it from here. Alrighty. I am gonna be respectful here and wait for the car to turn. This is a, a bad choice right now to try to get in front of the yellow truck or this Audi. So right now we're going about 30 miles and I do have the torque or acceleration set at 25% for the front and the rear tires because at its standard 50% the front wheel was skidding out of control and uh, I didn't think of that as a good thing so right now we're in Pasadena on Oak Street and Fremont Avenue And you guys can definitely see from the road, I'm sure of it, all the damage on the roads, man. This is why we have to be real cautious. Especially with nighttime riding, which is why I installed that GTR headlight. Which again, you can get yours at Vora Motors. And get it delivered in just a couple of days. Versus getting it cheaper at AliExpress, but having to wait at least one to two weeks to get it. The only thing is that either kit, doesn't matter which one you get, it doesn't have any um, screws or bolt washers, locking nuts, nothing. So you're kind of on your own to get your own hardware for installation purposes. So I just opened up my little shell thing here to be able to breathe a little bit more. And we can see that we've gone so far 40 miles top speed. Man, this is great. Oh yeah, the suspension. Um, I have it set to the highest setting for the most, uh, I guess you could say, on the plus side for firmness, I guess. So the road is a little bit on the bumpy side, but I'm a big guy. So firm suspension is a must for us dudes. I don't plan on staying a big guy forever though, that's for sure. And I'm loving my install of my Wolfbox G930, man. I'm able to see the car behind me and the car in front of me. It's recording everything perfect. And again, on this lane that's about to split, we're going to stick to the right side. All 
Alrighty. Finally passed up the defective Audi with this broken turn signals that don't work. So at 40 miles an hour, that is the appropriate speed to go on this uh, street here. The posted speed limit is indeed 40 miles an hour. We can see that on my display, it was saying 40. And I can't see the GPS information on my Wolfbox G930 because though it is bright, it's not that bright. So we're gonna have to fully depend on the Insta360's uh, Ace Pro's um, GPS information. Right here we can start hitting the bricks so that you don't have to skid out of control and slow down smoothly. But for the most part, I feel very comfortable going at 40 miles an hour. That is, if that's what we're going. Only the Insta360 GPS will be able to tell us that. I won't know until I start editing this video. But it is a bumpy road. So again, the RS had a full charge battery. And the tire pressure was set to 50 PSI for both the front and rear tire and the torque or acceleration of the scooter is set to 25 percent and so far my leg seems to be doing okay right now on the right side so i depend on my right leg for the main stability of when i'm standing on the scooter so i have that leg on the board or deck at all times and only my left leg as a kickstand when I have to stop, like right now. And even at 25%, guys, this thing accelerates like a monster. It's about the same as a GTR, if not even more aggressive. The difference between the GTR and this RS though is that you can uh, like seriously adjust the torque to your liking. So if you want to drop it down to 20%, you can and it'll still get you to your desired speed. Which I think is great. I do have a car behind me, but he's a distance away. Let this guy turn real quick. Look good on you, Mr. Dewey Pest Control. He uses turn signals. I don't like that Audi driver. Okay, we're going downhill. And up a slight incline and we're gonna be making a left turn actually a right turn over here come on buddy you can go faster than that <sighs> come on sir I'm trying to be respectful here we're like halfway there 
all I gotta do at the library is uh, drop off some books for my son that are due today. Um, I don't want him to be in bad standing over these books and I figured instead of taking my car I would just go ahead and take the uh, RS with me and put some content on of normal commuting with the RS daily use for work things like that now I only work two days a week in the shop which I work in manufacturing and uh, three days out of the five days I work I'm actually um, at home working for my computer all right here we go so let's remain on the right side yeah that's some scary uh, road here everything here has road damage right in the middle where I should be at you can see the lines there's a big crack on it I would easily fall over that man this is where you as a scooter rider will also have to be cautious remember these are 11 inch tires the Wolf King GTR has 12 inch tires which I think it's a bigger improvement on the road conditions over something like the RS but for street driving I feel like the RS is indeed the best choice Thirty-eight is what it's telling me on the speed limit thing. Man, I should have brought some water. My throat is all dried up now from the the air that's coming into the helmet. Yeah, this road is very bumpy. Make sure if you go through bumpy roads, you grip on the hell <laughs> out of these handlebars, man. And keep your stability because, man, this whole thing is bumpy. Super bumpy, holy crap. This whole road needs to be paved and fixed. We're almost there, though. We got, let me see, one, two, three like three to four lights to go and we'll be uh, at the Los Angeles County Library I'm not sure where this guy is going you're gonna go forward you're gonna make a turn where are you going straight okay go ahead I'm not sure where he's going <laughs> That's funny, I got people looking at me weird right now because I'm riding an electric scooter on the street. <laughs> they just have no idea how fast this beast can go. I'm not really sure why he's riding in the bike lane. You can see that, right guys? <laughs> okay, good, you're gonna make a turn. Good for you. Here we go. Hopefully you guys are able to see this good because what I was hoping for you guys to see was the cockpit information as well as what I'm looking in front of me. Uh, the problem is that I have to really put my full big body weight <laughs> um, over to the front of the handlebar 
in order to be able to uh, feel stabilized because if I go too far back I feel like I'm going to end up tripping on this uh, scooter and fall backwards like on my back and I'm definitely trying to avoid that so I'm holding on to the um, to the turn signal here because the turn signal only stays on for seven flashes which is one flash per second so seven seconds and then it turns off good feature but bad feature especially when you're trying to fully depend on the scooter for uh you know for the road oh man i had to open this back up again well right over there is the los angeles county library so that's pretty cool now the turn signal turn here and let's find ourselves our spot where we're gonna have to go through this library obviously we're trying to look for a bike area if we can there's a couple spots there so ah perfect look right here beautiful I can uh, link up my RS right here this is great and this isn't going to take me long either so I can just come right here and bring the RS just a tiny bit closer because we're gonna have to put the neck this part of the neck right there is gonna need the lock so let me go ahead and do that right now turn this off real quick And right here, I have my forget about it lock from New York, which I did order um, the Hip Lock DX1000. One expensive lock at almost $400. But I ordered it because the current lock that I have, just which is this one right here, doesn't really have a um, uh, wide enough. Uh, ring on the inside for the max g2 or the gt1 doesn't fit so now we're just going to turn the wheel just like that and attach this right here like this and there we go and now you have it now it's locked let's go inside real quick and uh return this book we can leave the GoPro on because, trust me, this thing, and you can't take this off by hand. But the phone, yes you can. The mirror dash cam can stay on for right now. There you go, two hooks for my son. Now we can row. All right, see, we're still here. The RS is still safe here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the phone back on. Moto loop backpack there real quick. <laughs> it was supposed to be on top of that, but oh well. And now we can make our way back home. So, so far we have 12 miles in on the RS. There we go. Hello. Little good we got a baby. Alright, so let's have a little fun on the way back home. I'm gonna set this to gear four and see uh how fast it can go. A lot of people were like, I can't get my scooter to go fast. 
faster than 50-ish miles out of the 63 it claims. And you know if your scooter can do that. Well, we're gonna find out. Another thing I love about the RS on the trip information, it always resets itself every time. And I think this is really cool. All right, let me fix up my uh, gear here real quick because for some reason the height of this uh, knee brace lowered itself down. That's kind of weird. All right, so let's go to uh, let's go to gear three, and uh, we'll go this way. Okay, I can definitely feel more aggression on the acceleration so I guess that 25% really depends on your uh, gear that you're selecting So far I see 43, 46, whoa, okay I felt some wobbliness there, I gotta be real careful, let's go ahead and go on the, cheat a little bit and go on the bike lane, since there's nobody in it. Okay we're gonna decelerate here. Okay, see, I could feel it um, wobbling as soon as I let go of the acceleration. So that's kind of an issue. Um, I might have to tighten up my steering damper there a bit, but that is indeed dangerous. So as you accelerate, there is no um, wobbliness. The wobbliness is only there when you decelerate the scooter or let go of the twist or thumb throttle and then start holding on to the brakes. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely have to look into this uh, steering damper, see if that'll help with that. Careful here, with loose gravel. Forty-four miles so far. Let's slow down a little bit. If I don't want to crash, there we go. And yeah, when I do ride, I do have to like really push my body forward in order to appropriately shift uh, the weight to the front of the scooter, so I don't feel like I'm gonna fall off of this thing. So that's something new because I don't have to do that on the GT1, but yet the GT1 only does uh, up to 37 miles an hour, so I don't really know if it really does 37 miles an hour or not. But uh, so far, we're looking at 48 cap, so it seems like it's capped at 48. Let's take it to gear four. So on gear four, we're looking at about 54. I really need to drop the speed down. Yeah, this thing is shaking a lot. Not safe. Let's drop it down. I'm gonna drop it down to gear two. Yeah, gear two in all honesty is for the safe part. Gear two does 
no uh no wobbling no nothing no squirming of any kind versus me almost losing control right now at 50 something miles an hour i guess it could also depend on the rider too and the road conditions but this is what it is for me so all i, all I can do is just give you my feedback on the scooter and again we're working with 11 inch tires man oh something happened here let's see uh, what did i get in here i got something in there okay i hear something damn it i think i got a flat Uh, yep oh man yeah I got a flat how the hell did that happen well let's see how those uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see that but I got a flat right there I got something stuck on it I'm getting it off right now and we're gonna see how this thing does back home I didn't think about bringing any tools with me oh yeah shoot uh, let me take off this glove oh, that's gonna be fun <laughs> troubles of the world man yeah it's stuck in there okay well that sucks let me pull this off I'm gonna have to stop the video here and try to get this pin off or screw all right so I got to get the screw out hope you guys can see uh, hear me but uh I'm not sure how well this is going to do. And the reason why is because it happened in the groove right around the middle. Like right around these edges here. And the air really went down, man. So let's see if I can ride it back in uh, eco mode instead. And uh, see if I can do it. We'll go from there. It's my first flat to first official ride and first official flat. My mistake, not taking me some needle nose pliers or something to be able to pull nails out of the tire. Now this was a big nail, man. I think it was about a quarter inch long. So that is really bad and I can uh, definitely hear the sound of the tire. Oh man, this totally blows. Well, that's life experience guys. <laughs> um, I'm going to most likely have to get as close as I can to a legitimate location like maybe CVS pharmacy if I can reach it or uh, whatever the hell it is uh, Walgreens so it's a pharmacy around there and then try to get um, an uber or a lift ride back to my house right now I don't see anybody so I don't know if I can legitimately increase the speed and get home safely we'll see right now man Okay, so far, it is pretty flat. Damn it. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna see if I can ride it home. If not, I'm gonna have to call for an Uber or a Lyft and uh, somebody with a van or a truck to help me get the scooter back to my house. This sucks, man. But this is life, guys. <laughs> this is life.
I am riding with a flatter tire. There's still some air in it, but it's just riding kind of flat. I am gonna have to move out of the way. Yeah, sorry guy. There you go. I'm gonna have to get on this side. Yeah, almost losing stability there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. So right now, we're like fully dependent on the front tire. So I put all my weight. Oh god, that was bad. In the front of the tire, hope I can make it home. Oh god, these guys couldn't do things at a worse time right now. Construction right now. Let's see how far I can get. Well, at least I do have a kit to repair my tire, so hopefully um, I'm able to use my kit to remove the rear wheel and most likely either try to patch up the tire or replace it. Cause I don't know if this has any like goo inside of it or not, but we'll find out. That is pretty disappointing, but that's one of the reasons why I like to share my experiences with you guys so you guys can see that. So my mistake here, um, that screw was unavoidable. I didn't even see it. I just heard a weird clicky sound and that let me know that the screw was on there. It could have happened to anybody and it could have even happened to a car. It doesn't really matter that this was a scooter. It could have happened to a motorcycle or a bicycle. Um, with that said, I should have brought a portable air pump and I should have brought some needle nose pliers or some kind of vice grips of some sort to pull out nails from the tires. So that was a big mistake on my part. So next time I go on a little road trip like this, I need to make sure that, uh, that I bring the appropriate tools with me. For the ride so so far i can definitely feel the wobbliness on the rear tire but there's a lot of traffic so i might be in luck in not having to go so fast but i'm on gear two right now which only goes up to apparently 40 miles an hour so a lot of stop and go traffic as usual For safety reasons, I probably should just cut the video off right here, but no, I'm not going to do that. And this Mercedes behind me should have stopped at that red light behind me, but they chose to gun it. I was trying to get away from it. Oh, man. This does blow, I'm not going to lie. Now I'm going to have to change the tire or figure out how to fix it. Maybe a small patch job. We'll see. to get destroyed either. I'm really far from my house, man.
You know what? I should probably be smart and take a residential side. Yeah, if I take the residential route, I should be able to be okay. It's going to be a longer way, but I can at least get away from some of these cars. And drive a little more slower. I have to take the sidewalk up. I think I oh God. 64%. It dropped quick. <laughs> I can't even write this in the sidewalk. <sighs> well, that is concerning. Oh, shit. <laughs> Scary. So far, I'm doing okay, but I'm driving very cautiously. Decided to take a residential street side where there's, you know, slower bike riding and stuff available. This allowed me to adjust my mirrors though, so that's a good sign. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna have to go the long route this time to make sure that uh, I get to my destination in a safe manner and not take the main street. So we're going to go straight up instead of that way. And stay on the bike lane on the way home. Technically this is what I would do too with the range test on the scooter. is a bike lane so it's not a a bad thing to be using these lanes but see this is exactly what I was talking about regarding the road debris issue you're always gonna you know go through something here get into the bike lane again if there's one yes there is yay oh no <laughs> this whole lane is the bike lane shit <laughs> well that's not good because I have oh good the bins moved away from me yay Again, since I have a flat um, on the rear tire, I'm pushing all of my weight to the front of the wheel. So I have my feet as close as I can to the front of the wheel as well on the front of the board on the deck. Just to make sure that I try to make it home. Seems like I'm going to make it home just fine. And man, am I grateful that I have safety gear on, man, because it could have been worse. Then my wife would really get pissed off, man. As it is, nobody in my family wants me to ride scooters anymore. <laughs> and I just, uh, you know, started doing content on scooters, on installing stuff. And then obviously this is my first official ride video 
on the RS. And now I have this at a zero deal here when it comes to like the actual ride test because I got a flat. Oh, come on, man, Mercedes. There we go. Okay, good, there's nobody behind me and I can see from both mirrors, which is wonderful. If I stay in the middle here, I can see everything which is good so adjusting the mirrors a little bit tilted forward was the best choice well I am supposed to be doing a range test in eco mode on this thing which is gear one supposedly goes 20 miles an hour it seems like when I was doing the test uh, earlier on that big street we got 22 or 20 miles an hour on the regular gear one 40 miles an hour on gear two and it looks like I was capped at 48 miles an hour on gear three. It didn't seem to want to go faster than that. But the scooter was also starting to wobble and that was kind of a danger. And I'm not sure if that has to do with the steering damper, probably does, not tightened up. So yeah, I gotta be careful with this. And then obviously gear four, I was able to get it to go to like 54 and I could have gotten it to go higher, but uh, I got too concerned of the wobbliness and didn't want to have an accident at an even faster speed than what I had with my Max G2. Realistically though guys, um, I'm pretty much just going to be riding this like I said before in gear 2 and not exceed that. So if I ever go on group rides, if anybody else wants to ride faster, they can be my guests but I'm going to stick to gear 2 on this thing and not go any faster than that. 40 miles to me, even 45 miles pushing it would be the max I would want to go on this thing, especially after seeing it wobble at 48 miles an hour. So, and I gotta be real careful here with my turns. I can't make turns too sharply. And the reason why is because of the basically flat tire on the rear. It does have some air, but it's not enough to like be able to ride it normal. Like I try to make a turn on gear two, not even uh, aggressively pushing on the thumb throttle, and yet I almost slip again. <laughs> like I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. Besides, uh, I don't want my wife to literally try to ban me from riding electric scooters, man. This channel is barely taking off, and with your guys' support, buying an RS using my uh, my discount code of TAG1983 Midnight you'll be able to uh, support the channel and if I make enough sales I can probably get um, Melvin the head honcho of Borrow Motors to kick me down with a scooter in the future to review and if they let me pick one you know I probably would get the GTR or probably the eMove Roadster if they allow it but that all depends on sales well, I'm almost home guys, so um, so far we're doing good with this. One thing that I do appreciate about this RS though, that is it's doing very well in eco mode, which is gear one. And I'm able to like get some uh, good stability. However, I did went over some road debris a couple seconds ago and I did feel the rear tire wanting to skid to the right side. Meaning I would have fell sideways like right now again. So I have to be real careful here, man. I'm trying not to let this uh, scooter skid. And the main reason here is because there's no air on the tire. Well, I'm basically around the block from my house. So I'm so happy that I was able to... Uh, that I was able to... Uh, Get to my house as soon as possible because my son gets off at 208 and right now it is 136 so yeah all right guys i'm going to stop right here uh we're going to wrap things up here and uh yeah man the rear tire definitely did get flat you can definitely see look <laughs> i'm not even moving anything this is just the tire itself so let's walk from here um we'll go to my basement and we'll wrap things up and I'll give you guys my experience on the ride so far and obviously uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix this uh, tire issue 
and uh, record a video on it for you guys. So let's wrap this up. Alrighty guys, so that was my experience with the Inmotion RS. <laughs> um, so uh, real quick, there was a quarter inch nail or screw in there that I had to take off with my fingers. So I did kind of jack up my fingers. My mistake was not bringing anything like pliers or anything like that to pull things out like that. So I'm gonna have to create myself a kit that I can take into my backpack where I don't have to worry about problems regarding the um, the uh, like tires and things like that. So I am gonna have to take apart the tire these are not self-sealing tires or self-healing. So um, I'm gonna have to take it off. I'm gonna have to patch it up from the inside of the tire tube and uh, put it back onto the RS and hopefully everything goes back to normal. But with that said, like you guys were able to see, um, it did really good. I got zero um, like tore up on the tire because I rode it in eco mode, which was up to 20 miles an hour. You can see from the display though on the, uh, RS that it said 22 but it was really going about 19 to 20 and uh, on the GPS preview remote from a uh, from Insta360 it was out of whack uh, I did get told by Insta360 that it needed to get a firmware update so they gave me a firmware update to uh, fix the problem so there's going to be another video that I'm going to load up of the GT1 as the quick spin drive to show how the GPS does as well as the color because like you guys seen I have um one of these ND filters, it's part of Freewell, which is the partnership with uh, Insta360 and Freewell for the official uh, ND filters that pop right in. I'm gonna have to get a second set because I don't have one for this one. This one does have a CP filter, but it's not dark enough to control the lighting. So that's some other issue that has to be solved. But with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I am gonna be doing another video of the uh, tire uh, repair. So uh, keep an eye out for that one when I have it available and uh, we'll go from there. But again, the speed wobble thing that had to do with the steering damper. And again, we got, uh, I was able to reach 54, even though the app said 57. And uh, when it came to the miles per hour, but I noticed that in order for you to reach that 60 miles plus on this RS, you really need to have a long strip for you to just keep riding until it eventually reaches that speed. So it can do it, but again, I rather ride it on speed two and 40 or again, a max of 45 miles an hour you know not pushing it past that so um this is it for my video guys i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, again if you guys have any questions regarding the emotion rs please comment down below if you're interested in getting an emotion rs make sure you get it through voromotors.com and use my code tag 193 midnight to get 200 dollars off and it would actually help support the channel by making a sale and on top of that uh maybe in the future malvin will kick me down with the scooter to be able to review i'm not sure which one it will be even borrowing a scooter temporarily and then returning it back to them would be cool with me because i don't have the space for extra scooters anyways in my house and uh we'll go with that so uh, again comment down below what you guys think and again i apologize for the really crappy video footage hopefully this new update and reset on this ace pro fixes the problem with the gps as well as the picture quality of this camera because uh, right now gopro looks like the shit because i don't have any of those issues with gopro other than overheating so um let's see what happens so see you guys soon peace for now